Just after the American Civil War had ended, Daniel Allen of Fair Garden, Tennessee, a Union soldier in the 3rd Regiment of the Tennessee Volunteers, had just boarded the crowded steamboat Sultana on the Mississippi. He thought he was going home to his family in triumph, but instead tragedy was about to strike. On April 27, 1865, at 2 a.m., a huge sound rocked the Sultana, a vast explosion. Allen recalled, decades later, The first I knew the terrible disaster, I was awakened, while in the stern of the lower deck, by the cry, She's sinking! and the shrieks and cries of the wounded and the terror-stricken comrades. I pressed toward the bow, passing many wounded sufferers who piteously begged to be thrown overboard. I saw men, while attempting to escape, pitch down through the hatchway that was full of blue curling flames or rush wildly from the vessel to death and destruction in the turbid waters below. I clambered upon the hurricane deck and with calmness and self-possession assisted others to escape. At length, Realizing that there was but little time to be lost, I divested myself of all clothing, and throwing a plank out, jumped into the water 16 feet below. I was at once grappled by two drowning men, who held on to me until I climbed into the bow of the boat to release myself from their hold. I then descended the cable and made for the Arkansas shore. I was in the water five hours when I was picked up by a lifeboat. Allen's was just one story. There were many others. Let us continue to follow this terrible arc from triumph to tragedy by focusing on the Pickens brothers, William and Samuel. One brother disappeared and died, the other survived and would bear the scars and memories for decades after this tragedy. In fact, he became part of an effort in East Tennessee to keep alive the memory of those lost on the Sultana. In that way, what had been a tragedy was now turned into a triumph of memory. Samuel and William C. Pickens were brothers from Tennessee. In fact, they were from a part of East Tennessee that was Unionist. For Tennessee, the Civil War was truly a war of brother against brother as communities and regions split over secession. The Pickens brothers enlisted in the 3rd Tennessee Cavalry, the biggest Unionist formation in Tennessee. In fact, William C. Pickens became its recruiting officer. After much fighting, that unit was captured coincidentally by another Tennessean, the Confederate Cavalry Commander Nathan Bedford Forrest of Memphis. They were marched to Cahaba Prison in Alabama. While Andersonville Prison Camp in Georgia was more infamous, Cahaba was also dire. In March 1865, as the war neared its close, prisoner exchanges between the North and the South began. By the time of the Battle of Appomattox Courthouse, when General Robert E. Lee surrendered, the men of Cahaba and other prisoners from Andersonville found themselves in Vicksburg awaiting parole. Now they just wanted to go home. With thousands of other Union ex-prisoners, the Pickens brothers rushed onto the steamboat, the Sultana, where they were told it would take them up the Mississippi to Cairo, Illinois. The Pickens brothers wanted to continue to East Tennessee where their home was, but the Sultana held a tragic secret. It was even now being overloaded. The Sultana's commander, Captain James Cass Mason, who had personal debts, had learned that the government would pay $5 for each regular soldier and 10 for any officer. Captain Mason wanted to load as many people onto the ship as possible. When all the Sultana's boilers sprung a leak, Mason did minimal repairs. Now the nearly 2,000 liberated prisoners, including many from Tennessee, embarked and the next morning the Sultana cast off from Vicksburg and slowly chugged up the river towards Cairo, Illinois. However, the Sultana's legal capacity was a mere 376 passengers. We are not sure of the exact number because so many eager ex-prisoners rushed on board that officials lost count of the passengers. But this is clear, it was overloaded more than five times its legal limit. To complicate the Sultana's journey even more, the Mississippi River had one of the worst spring floods in its history. The flood was so bad in some places that the river expanded three miles outward of its usual size. Then, on April 27, 1865, near 2 a.m., one of the Sultana's boilers exploded and caused a great fire. Seconds later, another two boilers exploded. The massive clouds of steam released by the explosion tore through the crowded deck above and caused the pilot house to collapse. The two smokestacks fell one by one onto the overcrowded deck. The upper port deck fell onto the furnaces, creating a more massive fire. Soon, the Sultana burned down to the waterline. Most of the men tried to jump into the water, however most were former prisoners and no shade to swim. 
Some didn't even know how to swim in the first place. The people who stayed on board the steamboat died in the inferno because the steamboat sank shortly after. Luckily for the ones who jumped, the Bostonia too was sailing past and picked up some survivors. Others flowed down to Memphis and cried to the people at the port for help. Their pleas were heard and a couple of steamers and warships picked up more survivors. However, most of the people who jumped, drowned or died of hypothermia. Even 65 years later, the horrible memory was still vivid for Pleasant M. Keeble. In 1930, he told the Knoxville News Sentinel about what he had experienced on that tragic day. I awoke, standing in bloody wreckage. In my ears were the noises that 200 men in fear and agony make. All four boilers of the boat had burst. I'm afraid that I walked on the shoulders of dying men in getting across that deck. My older brother had bedded down on the other side, but I never saw him again. Somehow or other, I was in the river. 1,700 men died in that river, and I got out. I was on a piece of wreckage. I joined hands with some other men on another piece. In this dark chaos, the Pickens brothers got separated. The day after the Sultana explode, Samuel Pickens wrote a letter to his mother and sister-in-law describing the tragedy. There were 1,975 soldiers on board, of whom about 1,200 drowned. I must confess, to the best of my knowledge, Brother William was among the lost. I have not heard from him since the explosion took place, and I have no hope of ever hearing from him anymore. As it turns out, they never saw each other again. And years later, at the reunions of the Sultana survivors, Samuel Pickens recalled that when the steamboat exploded, he grabbed a live horse, but the scared animal would not leave the steamboat, so he exchanged it for a dead horse and joked that it was the best swap he ever made. In fact, it had saved his life. There are different estimates for the death toll of this tragedy. Many later estimates hover around 1,700 to 1,800 deaths. It was deadlier than the Titanic which everybody knows about. It was also the deadliest shipwreck in the 19th century worldwide. In the early weeks of May, the Mississippi River receded, and hundreds of bodies, unrecognizable due to being in the water for so long, floated to the surface. If this disaster was so huge, why is it that many people do not know about it today? News coverage in April 1865 focused on the ongoing hunt for President Abraham Lincoln's killer. The sheer scale and sorrow of all the lives lost in the Civil War overshadowed the wreck of the Sultana. But now, in the aftermath of this disaster, we can observe how this tragedy, in the very midst of triumph, was turned into another triumph as survivors and families of Sultana victims worked to save the memory of the Sultana from being forgotten. One survivor, Reverend Chester Berry, even wrote a valuable book collecting testimonies from 134 survivors who recalled the tragic event. By 1889, meetings of survivors from different parts of East Tennessee were taking place in the Knoxville area. South of Knoxville, the Mount Olive Cemetery, a survivor named John H. Simpson helped create a Sultana monument that still stands today. In Tennessee Marble, this monument recorded almost 400 names of Tennesseans who endured the Sultana disaster. The Pickens brothers' names are on the monument. Samuel, who survived, and William, who did not. The monument showed a beautiful picture of the Sultana. The monument was dedicated in 1916, over half a century after the Sultana explosion. Over the following decades, a parade held in Knoxville on Memorial Day concluded with the throwing of wreaths into the Tennessee River to remember the men of the Sultana. The last survivor, Pleasant M. Keeble, died in 1931, which is 66 years after the disaster. In fact, descendants of the Sultana men keep the memory of it alive today, as does a small museum near Memphis. But in fact, all of us should recall this amazing story how a moment of triumph turned into unexpected tragedy and how the efforts of survivors triumph over forgetting.